welcome geeks and pop culture enthusiasts to the second installment in this behind the scenes look at Zenoscope Entertainment brought to you by popgeeks.com in collaboration with Wizards, the podcast guide to comics. I'm Adam Pope. And totally nerding out, I'm Michael Canetti. <laughs> <laughs> and we are back to chat with another one of the creative minds behind publications such as Grim Fairy Tales, Bell, and the recent Oz, Return of the Wicked Witch, among many other credits. So without further ado, Dave Franchini, welcome to the conversation. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, glad to be here. So first of all, to start off, I like I said, I'm a huge fan of your work. I have a ton of comics written by you. I have... <laughs> i've got my bell box here i've got uh just in the past couple of days i've been piling through some of the the stuff you've worked on recently and um so um i gotta start asking by saying like you know and this is going to parlay into a story that i have one of my favorite characters that you've done and in the zenoscope universe is cinderella serial killer i love serial killers i live in long island so this whole like gilgo beach thing is like blow my mind i'm so thrilled I'm, like i'm excited about it and i want to know where you came up with the idea to make her a serial killer joan ralph first introduced her in uh grim fairy tales number two like the original yeah. volume one number mm -hmm. two uh and she was a little quirky a little crazy and then they brought her back for like grim fairy tales number 45 um, and that's when she got, she became more sadistic. She was like mm -hmm. making, uh, she was making a lot of like the sorority girls, like hold actual hearts and squeeze it over their heads and mm -hmm. a little crazy, <laughs> but she didn't like completely lose her mind yet. Like she was just evil and mean. And then, and then Pat kind of took her, took her over in like, uh, was it age of darkness? He did Cinderella yeah. age of darkness. And then he made her a little bit more flaky, a little bit more like a little, a little goofier, um, and it just kind of it kept evolving from there. Then we, after that, we saw her in like Robin Hood, Apocalypse, um, and then that's like the last time you saw her for a while. Because yeah, spoiler. I mean, I'm a spoiler, but it's, it was a while ago. <laughs> Blows up. She kills a, a she kills a, a four horseman in the apocalypse, and she incinerate. It gets incinerated. Yeah, um, so I have like, that. I have that issue somewhere in one of my boxes. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, so like, I, and like, this is before I even really wrote. Like, I started out at Zenoscope as an intern, and then I went into sales, and then I kind of slowly edged my way into it, like mm -hmm. editing and writing. Um, so I, I came up with the idea. I was like, well, I was like, I always love, I love Garth Ennis. I love like, like Punisher kills the Marvel Universe. I love, mm -hmm. I love that, that craziness. I love Deadpool. Like, my, like, honestly, I, I don't know like, if it's blasphemy for some people, it doesn't matter. I love like the Daniel Way uh deadpool like that that whole run where it was like mm -hmm. starts off like secret invasion yeah um, so like i always loved that and i was like so i pitched it to joe one of the owners i was like i was like what if we did one where like cindy goes around and just literally just murders everybody and mm -hmm. i had a plan for it i was like it's not set in the the real world they're not really getting murdered it's just this is how we bring her back to life after she was in the apocalypse because like joe already started planting seeds for uh this this group called taro which was like, they, they were kind of mm -hmm. voodoo-esque. They were set in New Orleans. And I was like, okay, so we can kind of make it like they're resurrecting her. And this is what is flashing through her brain. It's kind of unlocking all her craziness that like she wants to do because she felt wronged at the end of Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. That was kind of it. It was just more like, she's been dead. She, she knows she's been dead. And it's almost like, like she's done it all. She's like, I already lived. I've done crazy stuff. I, I'm dead. So it's like it's almost like it's not a joke to her, but it's almost like she she's she's missing pieces. Like she's almost right. missing a piece of herself now. Because mm -hmm. like I don't know, I guess you would be mentally scarred if you died. You, yeah, you, you know, <laughs> like, like an apocalypse of death and kind of came back. So and like and she's and that's what's kind of been fun with her. Like so like yeah, that's where that that first art came from because I pitched it and I didn't pitch it to write because I wasn't writing art. So I was just pitching ideas mm -hmm. and. We had like a writers meeting. We were at like literally just at like a like a restaurant having just like a pitch meeting with me and a few other writers. And one one of them was like, "Oh, what if we do it this way?" And Joe was like, "No, I don't. I don't want to do it that way." And he's like, well, "He's like, Dave, why don't you write it?" And he's like, why don't, "I was like, really? I was like, all right, cool." And then I was like, <laughs> so I just took it and I just ran with it. Like I, he he gave me like little like uh, like little pieces of an outline and like kind of like all right, like 
let's break it into four issues. And then that way you cover this. Like, like you kind of gave me like a good like stepping stone. And then after that, I just kind of ran with it. Like, yeah, but I mean, yeah, it was just after that, it's just been kind of evolving. Her. Like, that's all awesome. it'd be a perfect. <laughs> so here's my funny story. So New York Comic Con, I think it was 2018. You were at the Zenoscope booth, and I came over there because I was looking for this pin, first of all, <laughs> and <laughs> and then I was looking for what was at the time my like Holy Grail comic, which was this. Oh, and, cool. the and, yeah. oh I I love this. And then I'm like, you know, I want to, I've been reading Red Agent, a couple of different characters. I was like, do you have any recommendations? And you pulled me over and said, buy this, read this. <laughs> and you autographed it. So I have your autograph. Oh, awesome, and- <laughs> Welcome and then, to the insanity. <laughs> yep. And then on top of that, I saw this same time and you got me to buy this too. <laughs> awesome, man. That's, so, man, that's one of Garvey's earlier pieces too. Oh, I love that one. I love it's beautiful. And you know, this was actually the very first. I've been buying issues of Xenoscope for years prior, but it was the first trade that I bought was at New York Comic Con from you. Awesome. And, I love to hear that. Got you, and, hope you got you hooked. <laughs> and since then, I've bought so many. Like uh, I, I also at the same day bought um, the uh, the Courier by Ralph. So I have that, and I have a whole bunch of other ones and stuff and. My collection of Zenoscope comics is ridiculous right now. It's I've got I've done everything I'm from take full responsibility. Yeah, I got you on your first trade. <laughs> <laughs> you should. So I even have like the the Kickstarter campaign of like the Van Helsing. I have the statue over there. I've got oh. so I'm a VIP member for the for the Zenoscope. Um, I bought you know during COVID we were doing all the the Facebook live sale events. I bought a ton of books. Uh, oh. I eventually got my now holy grail which is this one i love this movie club one yeah that's yeah sucks. i mean that's we're, we're fortunate we're very lucky we were oh. great artists like and Sutton just like gets better literally with every cover literally with like, every i mean i've got yeah. so many of her There's covers little, uh, uh, Benjamin on there the little yes. dragon <laughs> yeah that one's so cool this was another one that i picked up that i was a big fan of it's not uh sons but it's just no, like, it's I, not, yeah, the chrome was that is that the it's the east coast one yeah because yeah. did one for uh heroes was it heroes or yeah, we did like a like a matching set for another mm-hmm. show. Well, like I, then... I think what we're learning here <laughs> is that if you are going to meet with uh, Dave at a con, be weary because you might start dropping <laughs> hundreds and thousands of dollars over the oh, years. We just got back from San Diego. Uh, I just flew back in yesterday morning. So, oh uh, yeah. I, so I, 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 the last thing is, I, I started out in sales, so like, mm. and like, but it was more like it. Like I started out as an intern, but mm. like I just that's how I got my job. Like I started out as an intern for the company by accident, completely all, it all fell into place by accident. All Because of one of the questions that I had was you went to Penn state to study like technology and, <laughs> and how did a, a career in comics come from, from that? You know, you weren't like a creative writing major of any sort, you know? No, it was, I mean, like I, I wrote my first comic book when I was like eight with me and my grandma. Like I wrote, I wrote out what I wanted. I drew it and it was uh it was a Ninja Turtles comic and it was a Batman comic. Nice. Two different comics and it was my own little fan fiction. But like I, I, I was either six or eight, I don't know. One of those ages where I apparently I couldn't write neat enough. So she <laughs> wrote what I wanted for me. And we kind of made my like a comic together through that, like two comics. Um and then after that I sort of like I was reading comics like and then I kind of fell out of it until like high school. And then mm. high school, like ninth grade, tenth grade, somebody gave me uh Watchmen. Yeah, oh, I, was yeah. I was like oh this is awesome and it got me hooked back into it and then i started getting back in i started going to a comic book store for the first mm-hmm. time in years like i'm actually i've never went to a comic book store before that i bought my first comics at like toys r us oh wow like, <laughs> like a five pack of green lantern yeah the, the little like the spindle racks where they had them a bunch together right back in the day yeah, yeah. And i spread the box somewhere it's in one of these like boxes <laughs> here, but so like just I just keep like, I'm just giving all the background stories because like apparently I, I I like to be wordy, but um, that's okay. We oftentimes we ask people what their origin story is with comics and and Wizard magazine, so have at it by all means for sure. I, no, yeah, so it was a radioactive grandma. I know, <laughs> no, um, no, so like like so I got in the got in this like uh, comics in high school, and then we started going to Philly, it was World Philly Comic Con, and we started going there, and then like I think, I think like I just got used to going to like I would just go there every year. 
go there every year and go get my free DC stuff, my free Marvel stuff, and then mm-hmm. they stopped coming. And then I would just just go there every year. It was my repetition, I, and that's how I hung out. Like I stayed friends with that one guy that gave me comics after like high school, and the, and I would see him at the at the Wizard of Philly. And then the one year I went, it was like my I think it was my it was my senior year of college. I'm at Penn State Abington. I have a, I, I'm getting a bachelor's in computer science. Like mm-hmm. I don't like coding. I hate math. <laughs> like, like I like adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplication, but I hate anything with like formulas. Like, I'm just mm. not a fan. Um, so, but I, but I, I want to do networking, or I'm going to do databasing, or something like that. Something where I have to wear a suit every day. Right. So, I, 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 so like, I go to the, I go to the Comic Con, and I'm just walking around. I, I heard about Xenoscope, but not by Xenoscope. I just heard, oh, there's Grim Fairy Tales. The right. retail fairy tales. I'm like, oh, I love that type of stuff. Like, I love yeah. that. I love horror. I love fairy tales. Like, I'm like, that, it's just what I grew up on. So I was like, all right, I went over to their, their booth and I bought, I wanted to buy Grim Volume 1. They didn't have it. Mm. So I bought Volume 2 and I found Volume 1 in another like like booth, booth around there, yeah. or whatever. And then I bought like a Sinbad book off of them because I was like, oh, I really like Sinbad looks really cool. Mm. And then so whatever I bought it, none of them really talked to me. That was the first thing I, I went up and it was just all <laughs> both of them staring at each other. And I'm just like, all right, cool. I want these books. Can I buy these? Like no one's <laughs> talking to me. And then, so like I bought them, went home, realized they ripped me off. Like the one book that was a 99 cent book, somewhere for three bucks. I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, so like, it didn't matter. I was like, whatever. I read the books. I'm like, these are cool. I was like, so I went on their, I went on their website and the website wasn't the greatest. It was like one of those old websites that kept loading. Oh, the early version of the website. Yeah. I remember it was like the yeah. old style, like HTML, just Bare yeah, bones. It, was, yeah. it was so busy so like it would like you go to click something it would shift and remove so i went to click on and it was funny it was like oh sinbad the next issue click here i was like oh i want the next issue so i went to click it and it shifted and i clicked the myspace link and it brought me to their myspace and then their myspace blog it said like internships needed i was like oh sweet i was like i need an internship why not i was like do you guys have like a computer internship they're like oh email ralph tedesco i emailed them and then, like, basically, he's like, yeah, yeah, we have a, we have a, our computer guy just went and became a cop. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and then I, I, sh- I went out, I bought a suit, but I, I went out and bought my, my first suit. Like, I was like, ah, I'm not going to get this interview. I'm not going to get this anyway. I'm like, what, who am I, who am I kidding? And then I went in, I remember I, I, I was wearing the suit that I bought like a couple days before. I come in, I sit on the couch in the office. There's a case of Miller Light in front of me. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, like, I go to meet Ralph. And Ralph just laughs at me. And he's like, "I'm sorry, man. I should have told you. We're pretty casual here." And I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, "I just bought this suit." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, this sucks." And then I'm like, "I'm super dressed up." And then I went in there, interviewed, and then he he called me back like a week later, and then he I, I got me a job there. So I started out as an intern, and their computer stuff, like that I, I like that they needed done. It was like I set up a printer. And I set up their network for all the computers and I was done. Uh, all my <laughs> internship was done in like two days. And I was like, well, crap, I need like, so I need to write 15 pages and I need to do like so many hours worth of internship. Mm-hmm. So I stayed on. I just kept doing like, I helped out anywhere they needed, like the, the warehouse, whatever you needed, I got it. And then I made up this 15 page paper off of like two things I've done for them. <laughs> but I turned it into 15 pages and I handed that in. But we were at we were at the Wizard of Philly. And I went back to like when I went up to them and I was like, that was the most awkward thing I've ever done. And I'm like, I can't shut up. So like people are walking by. I'm like, hey, have you read our books before? Hey, hey, you want to check these out? And that's probably the same thing I did to you. Yeah, I pretty much. Do it I keep <laughs> telling everybody like uh, when I'm old and I've had dementia in like a, an old folks home, I'm going to be the old, I'm the old man Franchini. Like, hey, have you read our books? And they're like, please <laughs> shut up. Like I said, oh. I was literally going there to look for a pin. I think I talked to you for a solid half an hour, and we just, you know, <laughs> bought a bought a couple of trades, a poster, the whole thing. I mean, it was oh, fantastic. I'm sorry for all the the the, the pain I've caused your wallet. I, I want to <laughs> ask worth because it. obviously you're saying it, it's kind of all beginning for you and Zenoscope at Wizard World Philly. What was your relationship with Wizard Magazine? Like, were, were you more about the convention, or were you reading the magazine? Was that a pipeline? I literally- I've read two vi- two issues of it, and I, I still have the one. It's somewhere packed in these boxes, but I remember <laughs> it had like it was like Spawn, and it was like, and it, it got me to buy the Spawn action figure where it's like he's got red armor on, 
and he's got like a blade out of his arm and his head comes off and there's this spawn head. And it, like, I just remember that. And like, I, I have that somewhere in the, this box somewhere, but I've read two Wizard World magazines because I wasn't super into comics. I was like, I liked reading what I read, but I wasn't in the back end of like, like, like knowing, I, I didn't, I didn't even know who writers were and artists yeah. were. I just knew I liked books. And then I started getting used to like, oh, I know I like this guy's stuff, or I like this character. I'm going to read everything Flash. I'm going to read everything Green Lantern. I'm going to read everything Spider-Man. Like, so I jumped into that, but I, I was never, I wasn't deep enough to know. Like, it was more just like, give me something, I'll read it. Like, if you saw the first things I would buy, I had this Spider-Man, the introduction of the slug, who's like a knockoff <laughs> of the kingpin. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, to normal people and to me now, I'm like, this is probably a terrible book. But I'm like, I loved it. I was like, I didn't care because it was just comics. Like, I just wanted to read yeah. comics. And, like, it didn't – like, it, I wasn't so ingrained where I'm like, oh, I got to read this guy's stuff. I was like, I just want to read it all. What was your first assignment? Because how did you let them know that, hey, I can write? I'm annoying. <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> no, like, so I just I, – like, well, the thing is, like, so I was I, I was a super fan. So, after, like, I, I did the Wizard World stuff, and I was selling. And they're like, well, we need someone in sales. Do you want to do sales? So like I was in sales and then I remember Joe was like, well, we'll keep you in sales for a little bit. Then we'll move you to editing soon. Six years later, like I'll cut ahead, but that was six years later is when I moved to editing. So like I would just read everything they did. Like every book I read, I've read everything Zenith Group's ever written and things that you might not have ever seen, things like that, like stuff like that. And like they had me read, like, and I was just like a super fan. Like I just loved the comics. I loved everything about it. And then like I would go through their damage box. Like they, they would always have damages every time you got shipments mm -hmm. in. And I'm like, can I buy these off you? They're like, you can just take them. We're going to throw them out. I'm like, you're going to throw them out. I was going to go through them, and I grabbed all the ones I wanted. I was like, why don't you just take these to the shows and sell them for like a dollar? I'm like, I would buy them. I was like, yeah, we're going to take these yeah. things. And we did, and they were like our biggest sellers. Like, you just see all the stuff. I'm like, no crap, because people want to buy it. They just want the books. They, yeah. want, they don't care if they can grade it sometimes. Like, um, So, like, yeah, so, like, I would just, I would basically read everything. And they would, after a while, they started, I started catching uh, mistakes in the printed books, and I'd oh. go and I'd write to them. And be like, I wasn't trying to be a jerk, but I was like, I'd write them an email because I wouldn't get up and say it to them. I'd write them an email, like, Hey, I found this in this book, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> we'll fix it in the trade. I'll we'll fix it in the trade. I was like, All right, cool. And I just kept doing that, and then after a while, I just kind of like, I would just pitch ideas. I mm -hmm. knew they would never answer them. Like, and I and I understand it now. Now where I'm at, where they were when I was there, and I'm like, yeah, it's just like you don't have time. It's not about like I don't want to hear it. It's just like, dude, I'm. I'm in the middle of a million projects. I can't yeah. read your nonsense that I didn't ask for. Like, mm -hmm. so like, um, so like it, it skipped like down, like doing like sales for like a couple of years. Um, we're at San Diego. Uh, well, it's two things. Like uh, our head of licensing, Jen Bermel, she was, she was getting our deal together with discovery channel. We already did top 10 deadly sharks and we were doing a follow up for uh, like great white sharks. And she knew I love comics, and she, uh, I think, I can't remember if she asked me or I asked her. I was like, "Can I write one of them?" And she said, "Yeah, sure." And then she, she told me to find a few. Like I found a different, like great white stories, and then I wrote one. It was like a, I think it was like eight pages long. So I just wrote it, gave it to her, and then I didn't, I, I didn't even think about it. Like I was just whatever. Like it'll get drawn. It's not gonna. It, I was. It was early. Like they weren't gonna get started on it for months. And then I was at San Diego, and Raven, who wrote, uh, created Wonderland. And mm -hmm. wrote like fly, and he was like our executive editor at the time. I was just kind of joking with him, uh, like joking but serious. I was like, "Yo, man, when are you gonna let me write?" Uh, he's like, uh, "He's like, he's like, you want to write uh, an origin or something?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well," and he gave me like characters to pick from. I was like, "How about the Goblin Queen?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yeah, write up an outline for me for an issue, and then uh, and get it back to me." I was like, "All right." So I finished out San Diego, and then flew home like I did like like uh, like the other day. Got home like seven in the morning. I slept on the plane and I wrote when I got home, I started writing the outline. I was like, I had the idea in the plane. I was just like, all right, cool. I was thinking about it the second he said, okay. And I was like, all right, how do we do this? And then I wrote this crazy long like outline and I said it to me, he's like, it's too long. I was like, all right. But then he, he gave me notes. He cut down some stuff and I took it and I, I gave it to him another time. He's like, all right, I'll just cut it down a little bit more. And I, I gave it to him again. And then, and then I turned it into a script and like, I learned the script because like I would, I grabbed, I think, theirs. Like I, they, had a, they had an Escape from Wonderland script, script book. And I was just going through that and copying how they wrote like their, their scripts. So I never wrote one before. I never, I never even mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. So like, then I did that. 
I gave it in. It was a little, it was a little loose. Like it had, I had a lot of empty panels. So Raven like gave me some notes and he filled in some things. So like if you look at the first one, it says written by me and Raven because he mm-hmm. threw it, he threw in some stuff and he, he helped me. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I didn't know to like the, just the formula and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then so it wound up being like it was 2013. So like then the Goblin Queen, the Grim Universe number three. And then the Great White Church came out within like two weeks of each other, or like whatever. Mm-hmm. Like so, it wound up happening at the same time, and that was like my first time in the writing. I wound up getting a nonfiction and a fiction at like the same exact time in the same year. <laughs> and now you just, yeah, you just never stop. There's so much that's come out with your name on it, and Michael has most of it. And I have. He has so I many have... questions about specific oh. works. Get, get into it, Michael. Oh, I know you have so much you want to ask. Like, oh, I mean, no idea how good it feels. Like it. it Dude. It's an awesome feeling knowing that people actually enjoy the craziness that you that you can put out there. Like I, I, I no joke, literally have every single issue of Bell and several different variant covers. By the way, like yeah. the only variant cover that I haven't been able to track down is the Carla Cohen like poker card one, where she's like, it, it, you know, that one where it's. Oh I think yeah, it's like, yeah. The, the, the what's it called? The um, the wild card. Yes, the that's, the, that's the only one I don't have, and I'm like, I need to. That's like my new holy grail. Um, well, let me uh, email me after this. I'll see what we have. <laughs> if we have any left in there, the warehouse. I would, I would owe you forever. Let me tell you. But speaking of Belle in particular, because she's you know a relatively new character to the universe in a lot of cases, because you know, and, and you've basically forged her from an idea, which I think is a great concept, and and. I kind of look at her as sort of like an archetype of a young Batman or a young Nightwing or or Batgirl. And like, where did you kind of, or how did you model her character off of uh, like anything or just kind of like? Well, like, I, I can tell you, I got, she started in a conversation with me and Joe. Me and Joe were just, we met the one day, we're sitting in the same office we're in now, went in the conference room and we were just talking. It was when I was like deeper into editing and we were just talking about like, okay, like, let's like we need us we need some stories coming up and we're like we're, we're gonna do this we're gonna do an armed forces one shot we never did an armed forces one shot we always do a swimsuit one shot we're doing that like every other year now we do one every year i, I have all of them, <laughs> yeah. have all of them. Like, it's, it's crazy because the pinup specials are best sellers oh they go crazy people go crazy and they sell out so fast oh, too they're, it's they're uh, cool. it's it's, yeah. it's insane it's insane and at the same time you're like i love it because like, i love working with so many artists and getting them out there uh but uh, yeah like so we were doing an Armed Forces one. We never did one. And I, I was like, well, should we do a short story for it? He's like, well, yeah. I was like, I was like, well, he's like, he, I was like, well, who do you want to do one on? And at that time, I was writing all of our short stories. Like, that's how I was keeping myself writing. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't really, I got the Cinderella one in like 2016. But then, like, I wasn't fully writing after that. Like, I, I wrote that. And then, then I was kind of just doing short stories. Like, I was doing mm-hmm. little things here and there. Um, and then, He's like, well, I don't know. I was like, well, I was like, well, what if it's a new military character? I was like, I started getting an idea in my head, and he's like, okay, that could be cool. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll write it up tonight, and then I'll bring it to you tomorrow. And it was like a five-page story, and it was just an outline. I was like, here's the idea, and then he's like, yeah, that's cool. Let's do that. And it was just Bell, and it was just about how she, like, through generations, her one side was military, and it was because of the armed forces that made me think that. I was like, okay, let's build something that somebody has a, a military background. And then I was like, well, what if the other side of her is a beast on her? I was like, so that way it ties into the fairy tales. And it kind of just evolved there, and I was like, I wrote the five-page story, and I, I gave it to Joan. He's like, oh, well, let's make, it's, I like this, let's make it into like a miniseries. And it was like a five-page story, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, can I write it? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, sweet. So I I took the, I just outlined the whole thing. I wrote it and I sent it to him. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. And then it, it, it's just where it kind of, and then it started evolving. Because then I then I read the Beauty and the Beast books. Like I read like the like I read our versions, like it, Grim Issues 13 and 14. I was like, what mm-hmm. can I take from here? I was like, doesn't make sense. I was like, those kind of end differently. I was like, let's make this completely separate. And then I watched the new movie with Emma, what's her, Watson. Yep. And I was like, I just dug into that and I was like, all right, cool. There's that. And I watched the old cartoon. I just wanted to ingrain myself in what we knew of that. And I was like, what can I, what can I take that people know and ingrain in this? And it was like, it was the color of the costume. It was the, and that's why the costume changes and the colors change. Cause they, they, they match that, like that visual mm-hmm. cue. Mm-hmm. And then it was just building it out from there. And it was like, all right, well, what would happen if, 
the beast they're coming after why is this happening what's going on and then i, I don't know it just kind of just flew out of me like it was just like all right well there's this and there's this and then and like i was still early in writing so like not all of it was fleshed out but when i gave the outline it was just more like because i remember at one point i was like all right well it's not gonna it's gonna the beast is gonna be her brother yeah and which i love i love that take that it's not a love interest i, I love that it's a it, it's so much more interesting well, it's really cool well that was the, the first thing that was like joe around like well like should we make it a love interest and i was like no i was like let's do it this way because it hasn't it, it's not it, it's unexpected and they were like all right let's do that like that's fine that's cool so i just kind of kept building it off of that and then it was just like all right well like like how messed up is this family and then it was just like and <laughs> oh it gets pretty messed up it gets pretty messed yeah, up and, well, I think the, and the whole character of bell and it's like it, 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 it's definitely like a batman but like i i, I try to write her because like everything you write is kind of a piece of you like mm -hmm. like a small piece of you, you kind of got to write a little bit of what you know and a little bit what you make up and it's like so like bell's kind of like when i write her it's more like my insecurities and like the mm -hmm. things i'm unsure of and and where i'm like trepid like like I'm, I'm gonna like I'm gonna do this, but I'm not like I, what's gonna happen. I don't know, but I'm like I just gotta take the chance and do it. And that's like the whole thing of my career, like like where I'm just like, can I do this? Can I do that? Be like pestering, but then also being sarcastic to cover up your insecurities. So she's kind of a little bit of Batman mixed with Spider Man. Yeah, like where he like he has like the the jokes to kind of soft like to to deflect them from thinking they're getting to him. But in his head, he's just like, "Oh crap!" Like, like, like I'm about to get impaled by the rhino. Like, so it was, it was just taking those things that I liked and just smushing them together, and then that's just Bell. Like, it is, and it's really interesting. And also, in a way, it's sort of kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in a sense, where like there's a legacy of these people that were kind of going after these monsters, and and she's the the next phase of that so to speak and there's a whole okay. secret society it's it's a wild story it's fantastic i mean if you haven't read it the first volume of bell is fantastic and everything since has always been very interesting so adam doesn't know as much about the xenoscope universe as i do and you. <laughs> right <laughs> well, exactly well that that's the thing and, and i will say so like the first thing i've read is the return of the wicked witch like that's my first introduction oh, cool. To Zenoscope Comics, and because we talked to David Wall last time, he spoke very highly of you the entire time, especially you were just mentioning how much research you do to pull in all those elements. And that's what he was talking about. He's like, oh, Dave's so good at that. He'll read every Oz book and all that. I did want to ask just real quick about that because it, it did speak to me. It, it was I only had a, a concept of Zenoscope from what Michael had described to me and then seeing a few covers and being like, I don't know if the, those books are going to be for me. But then I read the insides and I'm like, okay, this is a solid story and it's not all cheesecake. So what for you, as you and, and Dave Wall were collaborating, what was the most exciting part of that collaboration on this most recent Oz project? Well, I mean, to start with it too, like I love working with David. Like it's weird, like how easily we just, click on everything we do like we when we outline a lot of these stories together it's just like oh what about this and we're like all right cool that and we just kind of it literally flows and it's really cool to have somebody like that where it's like we don't really like our ideas don't smash into each other and push each other out of the way it's more like i like that idea how about we do this with that idea and then we do this and then it just starts becoming and we laugh because every time we're done an outline we're like we really like that one and we say it every time and i'm like yeah because we're we're obsessed with ourselves like <laughs> there's something wrong with us like we can't like I was like we're like, I, like we're like every time we do it they're like this is really good we really like this and then um, I mean and it's cool too because like I I love darkness like I got I got into like darkness and witchblade like back when I was like dating this girl in high school and her dad gave me like the darkness compendium or the was it the compendium yeah and then the witchblade one and I just got sucked into those and to when we like when we first started working with I was like that's so cool I was like I was like I have some of his books on my shelf I was like this is cool to be able to work with a guy that I read and I the only time I ever had that other feeling was when I like I worked with like Chuck Dixon or with Howard uh Mackey and Terry Cavanaugh I was like it's so crazy to like work with people that have been in this industry and building things that you've that inspired you to write anyway and that was that was always cool so like but like and that's the thing is like, I'm not a super like I'm I'm appreciative of people's things, but I don't want to be like I don't want to I don't want to turn him off from like wanting to work with me. I'm like, oh, remember you did this? Like, I, love it. <laughs> but I didn't yeah. want it. I didn't want him to be like, all right, dude, let's make something new. <laughs> like, 
So like, but I, I, that's why I love working with David. He's one of the most laid back and calm guy. That, like, he just kind of, he's very good. He fl- goes with every flow. And I told him that, I tell him that all the time. I'm like, dude, like, you just have this weirdly positive attitude that it creeps me out because I'm like neurotic. I'm just, he, like, he was super cool to talk to. Like he's just yeah. very chill and like very. And one of the best books that has come out in the last five years easily is Man, Goat, and the Bunny Man. <laughs> <laughs> what? I haven't told you about this. No. Oh, man, man, goat, and the bunny man. This is this is a, a Sun Komanaki cover, but like it's basically a man goat who's basically like almost like a, a son of Satan or something like that, and this humanoid bunny fellow, and they're sort of like you know, <laughs> and they're just it's the most insane three issue story you've ever read in your life, but it's super fun. And they have a follow up now. That's even just as good. Who came up with this idea, but I gotta know. So like that one, that one, like me and like after, like it used to be like, we'd go on little like trips to a restaurant, come up with stories. Then I think it was Ralph that was like, why don't we go away and do like almost like a writer's retreat. So we went, we rented a house in like Brigantine, like New Jersey, like right outside of AC because we like to drink and gamble. So we want to be close <laughs> enough to do it, but not do it at night. So like we go to the, we, we, we go to the, the house, we rent like an Airbnb, we go to the house and we're going to lock ourselves in. I think we go Thursday to Sunday. So like Thursday and Friday, we're going to do nothing but covers for the year. Like we'll map out, we map out all of our cover, like the collectible covers for the year. Oh, that's cool. And then we'll do like story stuff. And we're mapping out stories, outlining everything. And then like Saturday, we do that for half the day. Then we go to the casino. That's like our reward. Like we don't leave the house until that Saturday night. And then that Sunday, we would like do a little bit and then we go home. So like this one, this one, it, was, it wasn't one of the first ones we did, but it was definitely one of the, it was, I mean, it wasn't the first one, but it was one of the first ones we did. And we went there and we're talking about like different stuff. I'm trying to think what other story we came up with there. I think we might have came up with Hell Child, the blood money. The same yeah. Mm-hmm. We would have mapped out like, this was, these are all the beats that are going to happen between issue one, here's issue two, here's issue three. So when we give it to somebody or we take it ourselves, we know exactly where the stories are going to go, where we want them. And it, there's enough freedom in there for the writers to give their own twist on it. But it's more, we, we, we want to build this universe and keep building it. So man, go, buddy, man, we're sitting there and Joe's, like, well, like, we wanted to come up with a, like, we're, we're doing this thing where like every quarter we wanted to do a three issue miniseries that was non dream universe, no fairy tales just different to get new fans to see what it is and also to like stretch our our, our brains outside of the fairy tower realm. yeah well i had this idea like what if we did something with like the man goat and the bunny man and i remember we were sitting there we're like all right well what's the idea and then he's like he's like oh, i kind of maybe they hunt other monsters and like and then i was like all right i like that and then we just started like building on that we're like all right well, what if they did this and what if they do that and then and then we're like and I remember I Googled the picture of uh, either Ralph or Joe. They Googled the picture of it. I think I did. I can't remember. But they pulled it up. And I was like, it looks like he's pooping. I was like, we should put that in there. Like, yes. The it's, so, it's so insane. It's so and, funny. And like, so, and like, I, I don't know why, but poop makes me laugh. So like a lot of the poop jokes are in. There's a lot of poop jokes in there. Yes, there are. Like, like, like the bunny, the bunny like, like it's nervous and poops himself. It's really funny. Yeah. And then and then a guy picks it up and he's trying to track him and he's holding the poop and it, it's like, but it's like so like it just kind of just spun out of us just making each other laugh coming up with like because it, it it wasn't fully comedy at first and then we just started making it funny because we're like mm-hmm. it's crazy man goat and bunny man and I think Joe definitely didn't want it to be super serious so we just started leaning into it and getting goofier and goofier with it we're just I remember so- we had like we had those giant post it notes and we would just uh, write on it. <laughs> Like, all right, here's the next thing. Here's the next thing. And it's got so the good. Well, and then we started going, we went through the whole first issue. And then all of a sudden, I got to the point where I couldn't even keep up with what we were writing. So Joe just put it on his laptop and he was just typing it as we went. We mapped out the whole three issue series in like a day and a half of just being goofy and weird and then like taking pieces we had and moving them around. Like, and that, like, and honestly, while we were making it, I, I say it to Joe to this day and Ralph, I'm like, I was like, I felt when we made it, I was like, and it was like, it's how me and David said, oh, I really like that one. But like this one, I just felt different. I was like, I was like, this is one of the favorite, one of our favorite thing that we've created. And I was like, it's really, it's so different. And it hits so many levels of like things that I love. So I hope other people loved it. And I know, 
and that's the thing is like me, Joe, and Ralph have that weird sense of humor. Like I'm, I'm definitely the weirdest one. They'll, they'll remind me all the time because I, I, but like we all laugh at this very weird stuff, and that's all it was. It was just building on this and just we cohesively making this crazy story, and then we did it again with the second one. This one, the second one, we uh, David was included too because David wasn't in the company when we made the first right. one. And then he joined and we did the second one. I remember that where the second one has like a dog queen and all these. Mo- like these, these this sounds like the what, the next thing I need to check out now Dude, that I've you, uh, got you ha- past the world of Oz. Yeah. The, the, the funniest thing about it is like you could, they couldn't keep this on the shelves. The comic shops would sell out of this book so fast. They kept having to order reprints because people wanted it. So they're like this insane three issue story. People just couldn't stop buying. And I was one of them. And I was like, it's just a fun, <laughs> fun, fun. You, like it, man. <laughs> you know, I loved it. And I, and I, and I, I, I like obscure stuff sometimes, and this is really obscure. Well, and, and I'm I'm always looking for humor in my books, like that. Oh, that's you'll, like the you'll thing love that always it. pulls me inside. Love it, but I I gotta ask because obviously, like we're on two different sides of this. So Michael was drawn in by the covers, you know, that get a little provocative and get a little you know, get your attention that way. Actually, and, I wasn't it, to 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 correct yeah. you on that. I was drawn in. My first ever issue that I bought was was. Uh, the first volume of Red Agent, when she when they when they did that, and the first issue, it was kind of like a James Bondy sort of cover, and I was like, this looks kind of cool, and I opened it, I was like, huh, a reimagining of Little Red Riding Hood as like a spy, and I was like, oh, okay, and she's got superpowers, and that was it, and that was, and the covers kind of came second to just that story, and that's why when I bought this poster is because this was the first character that introduced me to the Xenoscope universe. Yeah. And I, I, so I'm curious to get your perspective, Dave, because, you know, for someone like me that doesn't realize what stories are actually in there, because I see a certain cover, you know, the look and the, there may be the reputation, your place in the marketplace. So would you think it helps or hinders that those style of covers? We we deal with it all. And the thing is we see it even at conventions, You, you see people and it's funny moms will cover their kids eyes as they walk by this, the booth and stuff like that and they're like it, it, it it's it's tough it's a hard thing because the reason they did it in the beginning because they needed something to to catch the eye and be different from your normal superhero stuff um and it, it couldn't be like fables it couldn't be like anything that was already existing like that so that was the reason it was like okay like like the two sexy covers they did it in the 90s like we know where it went in the 90s but it's like you know what they haven't really it's it's out let's bring it back let's do this and it worked and it's kind of like it, it's a double-edged sword it's like it worked it got people to buy it and at the same time it makes some people that just are so against that not want to pick it up and that's where we like we got to do with the convention it's like and that's why one of my favorite things is a convention is people that walk by and want nothing to do with us and <laughs> you're like just check them out i'll tell you about them real quick and then the jokes on them, you tell them, you show them the art and you show them how crazy it is. I used to show them Wonderland and like how they would paint the roses because they decapitated the card soldiers and they would paint it with the blood and it would just pull people in. And it started showing them that it's like, it's a joke. Don't judge a book by its cover. Like we're, we don't even, I think we've maybe mentioned or shown like a sexual scene like three times in 18 years in the book yeah like they're like, like, not like that at all yeah. it's only if it's in there it's in there because it's part of the story and not because we're trying to do like anything porny or anything like that so it's it's it, but it's tough because i see it from both ends like i'm so desensitized by it that like because i book all of our covers i don't even realize when i'm pulling off references i'm like nobody should search my google <laughs> I'm, like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, I was like, is this wrong? I'm like, I don't care. Get on duck, duck, go, I guess. As long as the fans buy it, it matters. And then, like, and it's like, yeah, you just, like, but it is, it's crazy. Cause like, but once you start talking to people and you show them it and you tell them it, you can just see this shift in their eyes. Like one of, one of my favorite books we do is Neverland. And it's like Peter Pan's a villain, hooks the hero. Oh, it's, it's like, great. Yeah, people are so just, cool. Like, and then you start telling him, like, oh, he's a, he sucks the life out of, like, children by, like, absorbing their soul. And that's mm-hmm. how he stays young. And they're like, that makes sense. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I was like, now check out the rest of these. And that, so it's like, we definitely see it from people. We, I see it all over message board. I read, I, I read all that stuff on message boards, Facebook. And, like, you kind of just got numb to it. You're like, it doesn't matter. Like, people that say that, I know they haven't read the books. Like, the yeah. people that are like, oh, all they do is this. I'm like, you definitely didn't read any of the books. 
So I'm like, I'm not worried about your opinion because you're forming it out of nowhere. <laughs> like, Yeah. Well, and you guys are here and growing. So obviously it works because people do get the interest, like you said, and then they open the book, you know, and they see a premise that's amazing that like is uh because it's everything you guys are talking about. I'm just like clever twist, clever twist, clever yeah. twist. I'm like, this is amazing. So, I mean, awesome. even, even like they did a three musketeers and it's, it's two female musketeers and one male musketeer and they have different powers and how they work off each other. And it's really interesting stuff. One of my next questions I have really is, so I'm, I'm actually really excited for book that's coming out tomorrow is Grimm's fairy tale 74, which you wrote. And it has a, I, I love sky as a character who's basically the daughter of, uh, oh, that's, that's it. There it is. But um, so Sky is the daughter of the original um, Snow White, whose name is Sela, or right? Seal, Se Seal Mathers. Yep. Seal, yeah, and and she's a really cool character. She travels through. She's got all kinds of wild powers. It's really interesting. But she's crossing over with Red Agent, who's one of my favorite characters. And I'm I can't wait to pick it up. I'm I'm ready to go to the store tomorrow and get it. Um, the question I have is, of all the different Grim characters, who is a a crossover event that you'd like to sort of mash up with each other? Um, I definitely, I still want to do, I mean, we haven't had like, we, we've had it happen, but they haven't really had an interaction. Like the interactions that I, I, I want to see yet. I haven't seen bell with Van Helsing and I haven't seen bell with, uh, with Robin. Yeah. And I love, like, cause like boost, like, I just like, I, it doesn't mean we won't, but it means like I just haven't seen them yet. So I, I really like that stuff, and I'm not try, trying to just be like, oh, because I love Bell. It's just like I just I'm very interested to see those characters interact, and I I say that like a weirdo because it's like you don't know what they're gonna say to each other until you start getting them to talk to each other, and then and then all of a sudden you're like like the banter between them, like like so. I mean, there's definitely that. I mean, and and I want to see Cinderella meet Gretel. Like mm -hmm. I would love to oh, see that it. would be great! That'd be a great fight. Oh man, that'd be cool. Oh, because yeah, Gretel can yeah. take damage from. Yeah. Like, Cindy. I am curious though. We're talking about crossovers here. Obviously, in the '90s, crossovers were huge. Like Marvel and DC were even crossing over in those days. So, this is a question that Michael actually threw out to Dave Wall last time. For you, if you could bring in another character from another publisher into the Zenoscope universe, if you guys were able to strike a deal, who would it be? And who would you want them to cross over with that you're writing? Oh, that's tough. I mean, I can give you a, like a weird answer. I'd be like Winnie the Pooh. And, <laughs> and you just like, it's just like a talking bear. And these people are just like, what's going on here? Um, no, I mean, let me think. I can see the turtles with Robin in New York City. I would love the Ninja Turtles, but like my fears, like I would, I think I would, I'd be too scared to ever write the Ninja Turtles <laughs> and, and bring them into our world just because like I wouldn't want to ruin them for myself. Um, I don't know. Let me look on my shelf real quick. I mean, I actually, I love the darkness. Darkness is literally one of my favorite like characters. So bringing him into like a Robin story. Or in the even like even like a like a Gretel story because she would perceive him as almost like witchcraft. That would be really cool. Um, yeah, there's it's definitely like a like a few different ones. I mean, I wouldn't go in like a, a, a Spider Man or Superman. I just don't think it would fit into our right. world. Um, but yeah, I mean, probably for me, it would probably, I'd probably find the weirdest possible thing ever and try to make it as weird as possible. I, I like weird stories too, and I like things that make me laugh. So it would be something like. Like bone would come in, and it would just be like, <laughs> and he's just he, he's 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 attracted to Cindy, or like, <laughs> and, like he's like, but then he's realizing like that she's insane and she's not like Thorn. Dave, hey, this has been super super fun. Like I've been, I'm so thrilled to have you on the podcast. This has been super cool. I could talk to you for hours. I don't want to keep you all night. Um, but I, you know, I have a couple last minute sort of questions for you. You know, so you've had a really interesting story arc for your career and journey and working in this, uh, in this company. What I love about Zenoscope is you kind of have a, a small, like sort of family community in within the company itself. And how do you guys maintain that sort of, you know, connectivity with each other and, and, you know, sort of keep the fandom going. Cause you guys really figured it out, especially during COVID, like how to keep connected with people and stuff like that. I mean, we, we just like each other. I mean, that's, that's really it. Like, it, you, you kind of, like, I mean, we've been together for so long, and you just kind of, 
and that's the thing is I feel like if we didn't click and we, we've seen it, like you see like every company, like people that don't click, they normally don't stay long or they don't right. like we, we click and the people that are there, we all click. And it, it's just weird. Like I, I even that, like it, it's just, I remember with Joe and Ralph, it was like, they were my bosses, but I would go to conventions with them and hang out with them at that. There was like restaurants and bars and just mm-hmm. kind of just, it, just be ingrained into this, this family. And like, and also some of them are actually part of their family. Like some of them like are like uh, Joe's sister-in-law or like a, a, one of their best, Joe and Ralph's friend for 30 years is one of one of the, like our, our lead sales guys. Like, so it's like, it was for me, it was just, getting and molding in with them and it's just like we all we all just kind of get along we, don't, we just get along we're all a bit like quirky and weird not to the point of just like being crazy i mean that we know of but we're just like we, we, we all bounce off each other and laugh all day like like just the, the the topics we talk about there probably should be frowned upon but we just we just <laughs> we, we, it's just more because we're like it's stretching our like we're, we're all like everybody in there from sales marketing shipping they're all creative people and mm-hmm. we're all we're all kind of just like we feed off each other and make each other laugh, or we or we build ideas for like things. Even when we complain, which we do, we we complain and then we make a sales idea off of it. We're like, oh, we have too many of these, or what's going on with this? We're like, oh, well, let's get this out there. We just kind of we all just kind of work together because we want the company to succeed because this is like it's all our lives. Like we're putting so much of our life into this. Like we want it to be better. Well, as you, as you can tell, the sales are doing fine. If just just from me alone, um, I mean, I even have the the uh, uh, Inferno bottle opener somewhere. I've got all, all kinds of stuff. I got everything. Let me tell you. Only thing that as soon as they start coming out with hot toys for Zenoscope carriers, they just email me, and I'll just pre-order all of them, no problem. We're working with uh, I forget, Divine Statues, Divine Studios, and they're working on a statue now too. I've been waiting for this six scale bell statue for like four years. Oh, oh I think I, that, that sadly isn't going to come. I, I heard, I heard I was bummed, but it was beautiful. I was, I was bummed. It, it had a light built into the bottom of it. It was yeah. awesome. Oh, it was amazing. But Dave, again, thank you so much for being on our podcast. We, we, I, I am thrilled. We loved having you. It's so fantastic to talk to you. How can people connect with you online and find out what's coming up in Zenoscope and, and where can the listeners get excited about, stuff in the future for you guys well no I mean, th- thanks for having me on like i really appreciate it you guys are fun like i'll talk to you guys for all, all like, forever <laughs> so like i mean anytime you guys want me to talk again i'll bug you all the time um, <laughs> that's so I really great appreciate you guys let me on um again definitely have me like like rescheduling with me for this stuff like i, I love being able to talk to you and i'm glad you're a super fan that makes me even happier because it means all the nights i don't sleep somebody else is at least benefiting <laughs> yes <laughs> but, i'm sitting uh, on my couch reading probably so <laughs> i like to hear but no, I mean, like, so you can find us on like uh, Facebook, just Zenoscope uh, Entertainment, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we had a TikTok. I don't think we updated anymore, so don't worry about that. Uh, and then we do monthly live streams. So every mm-hmm. month we continue the live streams. Yeah. We're actually having one this Friday and Saturday on like, so you just go to Facebook and you can join on there. Um, our website, it'll, you can join the email list and we'll, we'll bombard mm-hmm. you with emails that you hopefully want to get on a ton of different books new things coming out forever just just mm-hmm. forever mm-hmm. Um, until you unsubscribe and then we'll just we'll find you and we'll put it in your <laughs> mailbox no, um, but no i mean like I said, and you I mean, can even buy back issues on there there's a lot of back issue covers oh, and you know trades and all kinds of it's a ton of great content i mean they do really cool stuff from like you know movie covers and they have guests on that and they do live they have a podcast now as well um it's really great stuff. So if you if you are interested in a unique, cool company that is different from the big, you know, two or even if you count image big three, check out Zenoscope. They've got really great content. And and Dave, again, thank you so much for being a part of this with us. It's a it's a true honor to me. And I'm so glad that five years later I got to pay it forward and show you my first trade I bought from you. So it's super cool for I me as well. It, man. Oh, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. We want to thank everybody who checked out this interview. Hey, if you found us through popgeeks.com, why not check out Wizards, the podcast guide to comics? You can find us at wizardscomics.com. We're at Wizards Comics on Twitter, at Wizards underscore comics on Instagram. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere. But also, if you found out about Pop Geeks through Wizards, the podcast guide to comics, well, you can go on over to popgeeks.com. They have movie reviews, game reviews, all sorts of fun stuff in pop culture. It's definitely going to be 
catch your attention and keep you excited. And just stay on board for our third and final installment in this series. We'll be talking to Ralph Tedesco, co-founder of Xenoscope Entertainment. So stay tuned and hey, until next time, we'll check you later. Yeah.